everybody, <coughs> it's a, a great pleasure to attend the Blossomet uh, uh, <coughs> seminar about uh, the balloon. Uh, the today are uh, the because of the jet lag. Uh, China now is uh, three uh, o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, Europe is eight o'clock in the morning. So first of all, I will uh, introduce the <coughs> dear colleagues attend the meeting. They, we were uh, had a great honor to uh, invite Professor Sao <coughs> Liang Chen uh, as the chairman of uh, the meeting. Uh, Professor <coughs> Chen uh, is a director of cardiology and cath lab, Nanjing First Hospital, and the Nanjing Medical University. Uh, he is a member of uh, JASCA and uh, members of uh, ACC, AHI, ESC, and uh, APC. Uh, he's also very famous uh, in uh, interventional cardiology, uh, including uh, bifurcation and uh, the innovation of uh, primary artery hypertension and uh, so on. Uh, the <clears throat> I, I Myself is uh, Le Feng Wang from uh, Beijing, uh, Chaoyang Hospital, and uh, <coughs> to be professor and uh, chief physician of uh, Beijing Chaoyang Hospital. Uh, and uh, and we also have uh, uh, Professor <coughs> Antonio Colombo. Uh, Colombo is uh, very famous uh, in the world to in interventional cardiology, where we were. He had many contributions uh, in uh, interventional cardiology, including uh, the procedure method and uh, device uh, modifier and uh, everything uh, in interventional cardiology. We were very happy he is attending the, uh, the meeting. We will also have uh, Professor <coughs> Gobrin Vasliv from Bulgaria. He is uh, the medical <clears throat> director at, at uh, Medicare Core Hospital, Luz, Bulgaria. Bulgaria. And uh, we will also have uh, Professor Chu Ji Hu from uh, Malaysia. Uh, he's a uh, consultant cardiology at uh, Cardiac Vascular Center, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Welcome. And uh, we will also have uh, honored the speaker, uh, uh, Greg Lamban Dart from uh, Switzerland. He uh, is a director of uh, the CDO and the chief program at the University Hospital of Basel, Switzerland. He's a, a European by vacation club. Uh, a switch working group interventional cardiology member. Europe CDO Club Associated Member, Swiss CDO Community Board Member, and the Swiss Society of Cardiology Member. We will also have uh, Professor Stefano Galli from Italy. He's an interventional cardiologist at the Central Cardiological Monzino, Milan. He's, uh, <coughs> Dr. Galli has long been engaged in the clinical practice and the scientific research on interventional cardiology, especially in the field of treatment of coronary artery disease. Uh, we will also uh, have uh, Professor Guo Wang Gang, Guo Wang Gang uh, from, uh, he's the deputy director of the Department of Cardiovascular uh, Tangdu Hospital. Air Force Medical University in Xi'an, China. Uh, Professor Guo uh, is a PhD, uh, postdoctor doctor and a postdoctor graduate level tutors of the University uh, of Sydney, senior Air Force uh, personnel. 
uh, along the meeting, uh, we will have uh, Professor Gao Fei, uh, for he's the chief physician, uh, doctor of cardiology in Beijing Anzhen Hospital. He will as uh, simultaneous uh, interpreter for for the meeting. Thank you. Now we will <coughs> we will invite the Professor Chen uh, Chen Shaoliang will give us the presentation. Welcome. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wang for your uh, very nice introduction. Uh, so first of all, I think uh, Dr. Antonio Colombo only has thirty minutes to stay with us. So I propose to invite Professor Colombo to give us a short speech. Antonio, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. And um, uh, I do not have uh, any slide, but uh, I want to highlight uh, that in bifurcation stenting, especially when you use uh, uh, two stents, uh, any detail is fundamental because uh, uh, bifurcation stenting uh, is uh, uh, a procedure where the risk of events uh, are high only if uh, the result is not optimal. If you have an optimal result, uh, we believe that the risk of adverse events is uh, low. But the reason why we still see in many studies uh, more events uh, in uh, bifurcation stenting when you use two stents uh, is, uh, in my opinion, because uh, details and the optimal result has not been achieved. And the optimal result uh, depends on two factors. One is lesion preparation. Lesion preparation is fundamental. If you do not have good lesion preparation, you will not have uh, a a final uh, optimal uh, lumen area. So uh, this is the number one point. The second, <coughs> the second point is to have uh, optimal stent expansion. Uh, as I said, optimal stent expansion is dependent upon lesion preparation, but then is also dependent upon uh, post dilatation of the stent. And uh, when you're using two stents, uh, which means when you're treating a complex uh, bifurcation, because that's when you use two stents, uh, the uh, pulse dilatation is fundamental. Uh, when you do uh, decay crash, uh, culotte, whatever technique uh, you prefer, you have to do high pressure inflation in both branches separately. There is a seminal study by uh, Ormiston from New Zealand where he clearly demonstrated that if you do not do high pressure inflation uh, on both branches, you will not achieve optimal result in the branches. And optimal result in the branches means large lumen, especially at the ostium of the circumflex. Uh, we uh, like to achieve at least uh, seven square millimeter in order to protect against restenosis. Uh, five square millimeter, in my opinion, is only acceptable for small circumflex. But if the circumflex is small, maybe you don't need a stent. Besides uh, high pressure inflation in both branches, then we go to uh, optimal expansion in the proximal segment. In the past, we did this by inflating two balloons, uh, hugging balloons, but this maneuver is acceptable, but is not optimal because the stand geometry is not uh, uh, round if you inflate two balloons, one a side of the other. Then comes the proximal optimization technique. And the proximal optimization technique, in my opinion, is uh, a nice technique, but uh, you need a very short balloon uh, and you need to be careful not to go outside the stented area. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm happy about the possibility to have a dedicated balloon. So 
to summarize, I think a dedicated balloon is important. Proximal optimization technique is important, but most important in my view is also optimal lesion preparation. If you follow this step, uh, you will have a good result, not guaranteed because uh, you know, when you do bifurcation or stenting, there is still uh, some unknown factor because you can have risk stenosis even with an optimal result. Nevertheless, if you don't start, if you don't finish with an optimal result, that you are open uh, for uh, short-term complication, and certainly you are not uh, free from long-term complication. <coughs> Thank you for your attention, and uh, I'm very, very eager to listen uh, to the presentations. Thank you for your <coughs> your opinion. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you, Antonio, for your wonderful opening speech. So I think it's very important, uh, obviously, to get optimal uh, standing results. Uh, Today, I appreciate Brosmed and all my colleagues from China and my great friends globally to participate in this roundtable discussion about the power technique in after standing, standing for coronary artery disease to minimize the overlapping of two presentations. I have slightly changed my topic to proximal optimization technique, POT in bifurcation standing. By the content of the whole presentation is not limited to bifurcation lesion. So basically, I will go through three topics. What's a port? Why do we need a port? And finally, I will briefly introduce the ongoing port DES study. So uh, let's back to the number one. What's a port? Actually, port technique it comes from Dr. Olivier Dermont from France. Uh, just uh, just during the seventh uh, EBC European Bifurcan uh, Bifurcan Club uh, conference, it's a technique to facilitate to promote the proximal expansion. So actually, part uh, is a abbreviation of three terms: proximal optimization and technique. As shown in the uh, right panel, you can see immediately after standing. For any disease called the tree, so it's very common to have one or more side branch taken from the main vessel. So after standing technique, the proximal stand size is the undersize, because the stand size is sized according to the distal vessel. It should be undersized according to the proximal main vessel diameter. So this is a simple reason, very simple reason why do we need a part technique, but for part technique. Uh, actually, the uh, reality of the power technique to use uh, one dedicated uh, non-compliant balloon to uh, exaggerately to dilate the proximal uh, slant edge to get the proxim very regularly and very well opposed. On the other hand, a uh, bifurcation coronary artery disease is seen in almost 20% of all, but all coronary lesions uh, undergoing a implantation of the coronary. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's some something. So usually, according to the EBC consensus, so which recommended the use of the the shortest POT balloon, usually six to eight millimeter in length, precision of the pop balloon positioning as a distal shoot. Or uh, very, very proximally to the proximal edge of the stem. So the goal of the part technique is to achieve the big, big and the bad uh, concept. So actually, many, many years ago, even uh, during the uh, Bermuda stand era, so the big, the bad is the uh, standard uh, concept to guideline our daily practice. Uh, Nestly, you know, with the uh, upcoming of a new generation DES. So the correlation of uh, minimal stain area with the clinical out outcome is very, very uh, in enhanced too much, as uh, Professor Colombo said. And also minimal stain area is correlated with the occurrence of incident risk diagnosis. Also, it could predict the procedure complication and uh, long-term clinical outcomes. 
So as shown in the uh, right panel, you can see immediately after stem uh, implantation, there is very, very much a, a fighting of and expansion of the whole stem segment. So we need to use a non compliant to over uh, expand the stem. However, is, if the NC balloon is oversized, particularly at the distal and the proximal age, it's very easy to get dissection, which could be invisible by visual estimation. So number two top, topic is why do we need a part of the bifurcation study? Because the bifurcation uh, involves the three segments, distal main vessel, side branch, and the proximal main, main vessel. So the diameter of the proximal main vessel could be calculated according to the uh, Moray's law. Uh, it could also could be very easily calculated during the procedure according to the angiography or I was or even OCT findings. So it means the proxy uh, main vessel size is pretty big than the distal main vessel and the uh, side branch. So it's easily understand uh, showed in the below uh, fig. You can see the distal stand size should be sized according to the distal main vessel diameter. So it's a very, very undersized uh, to match the protein main vessel. So uh, this is a very, very strong reason, very similar to the uh, general coronary standing. We need to do part technique to minimize the gap between stand struts and vessel wall. Uh, again, because the presence of a complexity in coronary bifurcation lesion, we need to achieve full uh, position of the stem proximal to the bifurcation and to correct under expansion to achieve full expansion. Also, we need to preclude any intended wire passage behind the stem. This is very important, particularly for uh, a complex bifurcation lesion of the stem membrane. So we need to rewire side branch. So it's uh, not rare to get the wire and they stand. It means the wire between stand struts and the vessel wall. Number three is to facilitate further access to the side branch by any device you use, balloon, wire, stand, or even any other devices by uh, pushing aside male or post stand. So it means uh, just before rewiring side branch, we need to very carefully to post direct the main vessel stand. So this is the general principle during a standing a, a for coronary bifurcation lesion. Finally, we need to correct final stand deformation uh, following kissing bone inflation or side branch dilation. It's uh, also another very common finding immediately after uh, after standing from distal main vessel to the proximal vessel. And also, you very commonly seen after kissing bone inflation because the skin chain of two balloons from distal main vessel and from side branch. So the proximal stand could be shrinked very, very significantly. So this is the number three reason why I need to do part technique. So as a schematic description from these four figures, you can see this stand size is undersized for proximal main vessel. So we need to use a short non compliant balloon to post direct to part the proximal stand. So in generally, you know, for bifurcation leader, we need to very, very carefully, very precisely to define the balloon distal mark just beyond the crinal level. If the balloon distal short is pretty long, so it could uh, induce very significant crinal shift. So this is the uh, first challenge for a uh, part technique for post uh, dilation. So number three figure you can see after kissing balloon inflation, also we need a part or report. Simultaneously, you know, even we just perform part technique for proximal segment. So because they very severely compromise of the side branch, we need to do casing, uh, which should be followed by report technique. After the report, so uh, probably need to multiple part or report. So this is also another sign of the complex coronary bifurcation lesion. Finally, you know, after final part technique, I think the whole stand, uh, main vessel stand size is uh, matching with the proximal and distal main vessel very well. So it could be the uh, uh, optimal result, as Professor Colombo said. So finally, I'd like to share 
the ongoing trial part years study is a study to compare to analyze the safety and the efficacy of part of PTC balloon dilation cancer for the optimal dilation of the DS implantation. This is multi cent uh, based in mainland of China. So as a left pan short, so in general, we could uh, segment the whole stem lens into the proximal three millimeter, digital three millimeter, and the middle middle body of the stem. So particularly, you know, for the middle body of the stem, it's very easy to use any kind of non compliant balloon if the balloon size is uh, uh, appropriate. But the problem is to do uh, post dilation to do. Uh, optimization for the digital and the proximal three, three millimeter edge. So the study flow chart is that immediately after the uh, implantation of uh, any kind of uh, DES. So we need to check, I was to measure the baseline minimal stand area, and then the, uh, the patient uh, were randomly uh, assigned to part group and the convention, a non-compliant balloon. So uh, after carefully post dilation using part balloon or convention non-compliant balloon, so we need to repeat to re recheck I was. Finally, we need to uh, sort out the final result and to do comparison. So the study endpoint is a change of minimal stair area measured by intravascular ultrasound I was. Also, we need to provide two secondary endpoints, PCI success and the device success. Even the concept, the definition of these two secondary endpoints is uh, all up a little bit more, but PCI success is defined as a residual diameter stenosis, a, a minimal or a, a equal or less than 30%, no intro procedure, death, myocardium function, or the requirement of urgent cabbage. Device success is defined as successfully uh, completion of the procedure. No balloon-related vascular perforation, no type B or type C dissection, and also the final TME flow uh, as three. So according to our previous data, so the assumption of this trial is used to calculate the sample size. Uh, our assumption is that change in the increase in the minimal stand area in the part group was a convention non-component balloon, uh, included absolute change uh, uh, will be uh, 0.15 millimeters square. Uh, and uh, the percentage of change in minimal stand area uh, will be greater than 10%. So finally, 48 patient a uh, ratio of one to one to either part of convention non-compliant balloon group. Table shows the baseline and the baseline characteristic from the table. You can say so far, you know, we only collected the 24 uh, patients. Uh, only half of the expected patient number. So uh, roughly you can see uh, there was no significant difference in terms of the age, risk factors, uh, clinical presentations, and also left ventricular ejection fraction between two groups. So from the lesion characteristics, you, you, you can see most lesion localized as, as the RID uh, uh, without any lesion in the left man. I think this is a pilot study to uh, clearly compare the to provide the superiority of a part of the convention NC balloon. So the, according to the study protocol, so left man lesion uh, should be excluded from the from this trial. Uh, very few cases with a CTO lesion, uh, no lesion with thrombotic uh, thrombus containing lesions, and also only one case uh, with a moderate to severe calcification. Uh, TME flow three in 100% of a patient in the part group and 93.3% in the non, uh, convention non-compliant balloon. So I think this is a very, very important finding from IVOS measurements from two groups. So immediately after the standing, you can see the proximal plaque was, uh, was around 43%. We were uh, 43% in both group and the lumen area 
uh, is a, a 12 millimeter square in the part group compared to only 10 millimeters square in the non compliant uh, group uh, after post dilation. So I think this uh, is extremely, if uh, it's extremely fighting is the increase of the the minimal stain area as a proximal segment in the uh, PUT group compared to convention uh, NC balloon group, it was 9.33 uh, millimeter square in the part and only 8 millimeter square in the non compliant balloon because the undersize of the sample size from the table uh, they, uh, did, not, did not provide the p value. So let's go through the final case. I think this is a very interesting case. And geography showed a very diffuse data in sir, uh, very crit critical disease as a osteo-RID, but also very, very diffuse data from distal part to the proximal RID with significant lesion in the first dialogue. So patient presenting less than vagina with a positive TNT admission. So the baseline, I, uh, I was confirmed the minimal lumen area was only 2.8, 17 millimeters square in RID. So it launched short in excess of the, I was uh, provided the whole lesion length so from distal to proximal landing zone, it uh, was around 48 millimeter in length. So we used the true DS from distal to proximal RID. Uh, I think uh, on the probably uh, extreme, uh, extreme right figure, you can see the final uh, angiographic results looks very, very beautiful. So we check the IOS from the uh, serial IOS, you can see from distal to proximal. Uh, so the distal uh, uh, minimal, uh, minimal lumen area is great. So it means the vessel is very, very large. So actually from the uh, obviously, you can see the distal lumen area, lumen diameter is around the full. But again, from the, the proximal minimal stand area was only 9.74 millimeter square. Uh, however, for the for the middle body of the stand, particularly you can see 0.4, the minimal stand area was only 5.4 millimeters. Uh, millimeter square. Even we use the 30352 DS. But the final the lumen area as the middle body of the sedan is a, a suboptimal. But let's focus on the change of the proxim H. So we use the two part of balloon. So from the uh, angiography, you can see the proxim part is a full in diameter. So the distal one is a real in diameter to uh, concentrate on the post dilation of the proximal edge and the distal edge. And also, we used another long POT part balloon to sequentially dilate the whole length of the stand from distal to the proximal. These are the final results of the multiple uh, post dilation using a uh, different size of part balloon. So, finally, you know, you can see from I was. So the distal minimal lumen area does not change anymore, but the proximal minimal stain area from nine millimeters increased to 10.16 millimeters square. Also in the body of the stain. So you can see minimal stain area from five millimeters increased to 7.55 millimeters square. I think it's a very strong finding to support the routine use of non compliant balloon to post dilate, particularly for lung stain. And the second recommendation is a dedicated use of the part balloon, particularly for the proximal and distal edge. As a, we have to be very carefully to avoid the occurrence of any kind of dissection using conventional non compliant balloon. Replaced by part balloon. So it's very safe because it has very short, pretty short proximal and distal short. And it is easy to uh, precisely uh, define the position of the balloon as the proxim and the distal edge. So this is the final comparison uh, just after standing and the post, uh, post uh, after part technique using part balloon. So I think the comparison is very clear to show the advantage of part balloon over the convention balloon. 
Mm, I'm sorry. Okay. So once again, thanks to all my friends to spend your time with us. Uh, I think I have finished my presentation. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you for Professor Tan's uh, uh, presentation. Uh, any uh, questions for his uh, presentation, please? But I, uh, I like to congratulate Dr. Chen because uh, it's really it's so important to be meticulous and achieve a large lumen. Uh, post dilatation, it's really dependent upon the result you achieve. And, uh, and to see that the lumen area goes from five to seven is very important. Is uh, stenting has to be done well, otherwise there is no point. So it's really, I really congratulate for these uh, efforts to achieve the largest possible lumen with the safety. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, thank you, Antonio. Actually, you know, we are following your guidelines for many years. <laughs> I, we, I, I... we tried, we tried in the past to do this. Uh, I have a question have for, for Professor Chen. The, if you is uh, the guidance the IVAS or OCT is uh, compulsory, for you doing the part, or if you are good uh, experience, you don't need uh, that one, because uh, sometimes uh, the cost uh, and the benefit should be calculated in some uh, some uh, circumstances. Yeah, I think. Thank you, Professor Ma. I think there are two points I uh, like to share with you. Firstly, you know, uh, I don't want to make trade off between cost and effect. Secondly, I think for any com complex coronary, coronary lesions, so intravascular image guidance is a key, is a mandatory to improve cleaning of the car. So let's give you an example for any any kind of complicated coronary artery after standing. Uh, if it's uh, guided by intravascular image, probably patient needed to pay two thousand US dollar. But a one year patient care acid vagina and a very severe incident recently and also probably saying the PCI will cost a five something US dollar. So I think this is the this is the trade-off. As the Professor Colombo said, so during the procedure we need to achieve optimal results. Even somebody, some guy said they have the I was a guy, I or OCTI, I don't believe we need to use intravascular imaging to very carefully analyze. Uh, for some kind of lesion, uh, if we have samples of very good quality of angiography, we also can identify the point, the size of minimal stem area edge. So I'd like to ask uh, Professor Colombo how many percentage of intravascular, intravascular image use in your, in your hospital? But in, uh, when I do bifurcation stenting and I use the two stents, I do 100% IVUS when I use two stents. When I use uh, uh, one stent, I would say 50%. Uh, honestly, I would like to be more, uh, but uh, the reality is that sometimes not every operator uh, does uh, what he's supposed to do. So realistically, uh, two stents, 100%, uh, one stent, most probably 100%, but the reality is that when you use one stent, uh, many times you don't do IVUS. But uh, again, uh, IVUS is important, but it's also important the final result. As we always say, IVUS does not work by intention to treat. If you do IVUS, mm -hmm and you don't achieve an optimal result, IBUS is meaningless. Mm. Well, thank you. I'd like to ask Jing Hui and Dobry, my two great friends, and uh, Professor Guo Wang Gang from China. Uh, uh, in your daily practice, is the post dilation routine used for all kinds, all lesions, or for some lesions? Jing Hui. Thank you. 
I can go first. Actually, uh, yeah, go ahead. In, uh, in my practice, uh, pot, we are doing uh, in a hundred percent of patients pot. Mm, okay. Just always. We we never we never leave any um, one stent uh, bifurcation with uh, only just uh, placing a stent uh, and that's all. We always do a pot and uh, most recently we combined pot with kissing with our modification. This is a pocky technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, regarding the IVUS. Uh, I usually, in the cases where we use IVUS maybe in 20% of our cases, but in the rest we use the Finello about the how to size our post-dilation balloons. And we are very meticulous in using post-dilation. We are just uh, to, to receive the maximum optimal result in, in angiography, okay? Okay, thank you, Qinghui. I I have to leave. Uh, I thank you very much to everybody. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Antonia. Yeah, in in my center, I think we have used intravascular imaging increasingly in the last few years. I saw the increase very remarkable three years ago, about twenty percent. Today, about forty to fifty percent use of intravascular imaging across the board. Bifurcation almost always left me in 100%. Um, post dilatation, I think again, there may be some interoperator variability, but I, I think that most of us, at least 90, 80, 90%, would use some post dilatation balloon, especially when you use intravascular imaging, we size it properly according to the intravascular imaging. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if I may, just a quick question. I saw your data, interesting mm -hmm. preliminary result, but why do you think there's a better minimal stand area with a pot balloon versus the conventional non-compliant. Both are non-compliant balloon. Do they use higher pressures with the pot balloon because they are more comfortable with a higher rated burst? Yeah, it's a very good question, Jing uh, Hui. You know, for me, uh, for middle body of stand, I think uh, any kind of non-compliant uh, should work well to promote, to increase the minimal stand area. But I think the advantage of a pot is particularly for proximal and distal edge. So from my point, I think we not only say part for proximal optimization, also we need to say dot, part and dot, so distal optimization. Thank you, Jinghui. Lefeng, I think we need to move to next slide. Uh, we were, uh, thank you for uh, Professor Chen's uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for uh he might uh, professor send to moderate next uh, speaker uh, uh, okay can i see the agenda so i need to introduce the next speak so i think next yeah michelle can you show the agenda in the in the meeting chat I'm sorry, I I think I have missed a... Okay. So Lefeng, can you introduce can you yeah. can you continue the speaker yes. is uh, Professor Greg uh, Lam Lamben Lamben Glad to share his wonderful uh, cases for us. Yes, good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Or even uh, good good evening to some people. So let me uh, share my slides first. Yeah. So you should be able to see my slides now. Yeah, we can see. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just need to get something out of the way. Sorry this thing here yeah okay so first of all thank you very much for inviting me to this excellent uh, webinar about proximal optimization a uh, few things have been said already but i'm trying to focus a little bit more on uh, stent 
and looking at very meticulously struts and side branch and side cell opening. So uh, my subtitle is from bench to bedside. And I just want to rehearse that this is Mr. Pot, Olivier Darmont. Uh, he actually invented or first uh, presented and published proximal optimization technique. So I think it was a genius idea, uh, which was then developed further by his group. And now I think it's well accepted all over the world. And it is a, a very interesting concept facilitating PCI of verifications. And also, as we heard previously, uh, ameliorating long-term outcome in our patients. So just to go back on the bifurcation, I think it's very important that we all speak about the same issue and have a common or a mutual nomenclature. Uh, there is many angles and geometric relations in the bifurcation. As, and as you can see here on this graph, uh, we talk about the proximal main branch, the distal main branch, which uh, usually ha share a, an angle C in between. We also have a side branch, which has an angle to the proximal main branch, which, which is the angle A, which sometimes refer to the bifurcation angle. Uh, but there is also the angle between side branch and main, this main branch, which is actually the, the bifurcation angle that we're talking about when using different uh, dual stent strategies. Then, of course, there's the carina, which is the flow divider, which is usually in the middle um, or somewhere in the middle of the main branch and should not be shifted towards either side, not to compromise distal flow in these branches. And of course, there is a third or a fourth angle, which is the inflow angle, which sometimes makes uh, the bifurcation assessment in a two plane like uh, angiography very difficult and adds more complexity. And also there is, as you know, the conservation of flow, which is um, shown here in a more 2D um, analogy. I put on the left side a road where you have the same flow going in on the left side of the main branch. So you have two uh, ways to travel and the same amount of traffic can go out on either side of the branches. And that's why you don't have a carina, which is in the middle of the street, fortunately for the traffic, of course, uh, but you also do not have any uh, bigger diameter of the proximal vessel, which you definitely have in the bifurcation shown on the right side, where the D1 angle of the proximal vessel is about two thirds of the sum of the distal branches, depending on what um, um, calculation you use. And for me and cath lab, the easiest one is the Fine law, and two thirds is about the decimal uh, 0.667, which is published by Fine. But it's just easier to calculate in your head when you want to know how much you have to optimize your proximal vessel. Also, I think it's important to know uh, the nomenclature uh, of stents. And I just very briefly have here a stent design. And you can see that the, we talk about rings or hoops. And uh, indicated in orange here are the connectors, which are longitudinally connecting the rings. And these are different amongst diff individual stent designs and affect a little bit uh, the side branch axes. Then we have crowns and peaks. We have cells, which are really important for side branch access. These are open cells designs in nowadays stents. So they usually are large enough to have a good side branch access. And we have strut length, which also um, affects overexpansion capacity of stents. And of course, strut thicknesses, which are important for radial force, but not so much for bifurcation stenting. How do we choose the proper stent diameter? I said it already. So we choose the stent diameter according to the distal reference diameter, and then you inflate the stent to its nominal size. What happens after initial stent deployment is that the stent expansion only goes up to the reference diameter of the distal vessel. And as we know from Fine's law, there is uh, resulting malaposition on the proximal end of the stent. And this has potential complications such as stent thrombosis in stent restenosis, longitudinal stent deformation and rewiring behind struts. 
So what is a common complication of underexpanded stents? As I said, it's a stent thrombosis, restenosis, but also very directed uh, longitudinal stent deformation, which is impairing with the lumen. And then you cannot re-enter with any further gear and you might limit the flow and you can also sometimes not restore the stent properly and also have downstream effects. And what happens if you say, I don't want to have my stent under expanded, so I just use a larger stent. Um, uh, then you would have a stent over expansion on the distal reference diameter resulting in side branch pinching due to corino shift and edge dissection, which can be deleterious. So what we do is after sizing to the reference diameter of the distal vessel, we should do the proximal optimization, which is done with a bigger balloon according to the proximal reference diameter and then we prevent carina shifting, we keep the side branch open, uh, and also we oppose the proximal stent well to the wall. And here you can see from bench results before and after pot, you can see that here you can appreciate the carina, and there is some limited space because uh, between the distal cell and also the stent proximally in a green arrow is uh, under expanded and under opposed. And after the pot, you can actually see that the space is much bigger. So rewiring to the side branch within the distal cell is facilitated and also the stent is well opposed on the proximal end of the proximal main vessel. Nowadays, the stents, they all accommodate over expansion. So all the contemporary drug eluting stents are well manufactured for bifurcation stenting. This should not be an issue as it has been with uh, closed cells design in the early 1980s and 1990s. What can go wrong when you do POT? When you, it's just a recent publication by Gabor Todd in your intervention, and he actually showed what nobody expected because in uh, closed cell designs, it was the opposite. When you do proximal optimization and you overexpand your stent and also balloon in some cases, you're actually elongating your stent. And in some occasions, it can uh, be excessive and may cause uh, aortic protrusion or other damages in other bifurcations. So we should um, actually be aware of that complication. And he has also shown it in vivo in a patient. So it's not just an in vitro effect. And you can appreciate that the stent was elongated by about three millimeter, which can sometimes really be uh, relevant. And we, we should further look into these details of proximal optimization technique. What can go further wrong with pot? If you do the pot too distally, you can also, again, side branch pinching and carina shifting. And uh, when you do the pot correctly, then how do we rewire into the side branch? And we have to aim for the most distal cell closest to the carina. And you can see, appreciate here in the graphs that there's basically three options. The perfect one, uh, distal cell rewiring, and the more uh, medial wiring and one behind struts. Okay, sorry. Um, what are the consequences of distal cell rewiring? So if you really rewire on the distal, uh, most distal cell, we have a perfect scaffolding of the side branch with covering uh, the side branch with struts and then facilitates putting a second stent to the side branch adjacent to the first one. And you would not end up with too much uh, metal on the carina and you also have a well opposed uh, stent on the shoulder. So what are the consequences of proximal cell rewiring? the metal is going to be shifted to the carina and you can also see that the shoulder of the side branch is uncovered and you have to take in your stent much more proximally ending up with a neo carina at the carina space and this can actually then um, complicate your final pot procedure as such that when you do a final pot you and you enter into the neo carina and you you again shift it and this time it's a metal carina which could also have deleterious effects uh, just skip this for the sake of time so you heard from antonio colombo uh, kissing balloon is really really important and to accommodate and well expose the stent to both 
branches of the bifurcation. And you can appreciate here that at the proximal end, the stent actually gets overlaid by these two uh, high pressure balloons. And in some occasions, um, the, the stent stays overlaid and the vessel restores in a round shape, ending up with underexpanded and under uh, opposed stent struts. And therefore, we do a final pot. So you heard initial pot and final pot, and I just want to rehearse the initial pot, which is actually performed to open the side struts to the side branch to facilitate wire access to oppose the proximal end of the stand to the wall to prevent longitudinal stand compression and also preventing carina shift. And therefore, we don't want to push the pot too far, far distal. And after kissing balloon, we do another pot, which is called repot, or I call it final pot. And this is more to optimize the proximal stand uh, end. And this should not be too distal, as heard before, because you could actually damage or interfere with the potential met met uh, metallic neocarina. So this is the initial pot. And then you move back after uh, kissing balloon inflation the, uh, to a final pot, which is much more uh, proximal. And this is very difficult to do with regular balloons. And therefore, I'm really happy to have the pot PTCA balloon, which is very short and very constrained. And it's very um, precisely maneuverable within the proximal end of a, of a bifurcation. You can actually do initial and final pot very meticulously. So I think it's very important that we respect the bifurcation to improve long-term outcome, as we heard by Antonio Colombo previously. So intervascular imaging is absolutely crucial. And um, as he also said before, it's not only... So somebody is drawing on my uh, presentation. Sorry, I cannot further advance it. going on <laughs> <laughs> somebody's throwing and i cannot move it anymore okay thank you so it's free again uh so intravascular imaging either with ibis or oct is very crucial and important uh but it has to end up in an optimization of the bifurcation otherwise the imaging was useless so it's not a uh, di uh, only a diagnostic but also a therapeutic and again, I said the pot balloon is enables ultra precise proximal optimization. It's a dedicated balloon with short shoulders, which prevents carina shift. And when you see here in the bench model, like in an asymmetric or a symmetric bifurcation, this would be the conventional balloon. And you can appreciate that it does not open the side branch. It might not interfere with the carina if you have it too far back, but then you would not open the side branch and some of the favorable um, results of potting of the initial pot are not present. Here, you, the example with the pot PTCA balloon, you can actually see that it accommodates much better the bifurcation and the uh, polygon of confluence, and you still do not end up with the carina shifting. And then when you look at the markers of the balloon, so the pot PTC balloon does not only have the, the favorable shoulders, but also the marker at the very distal end. And you can nicely place the marker within the polygon of confluence and you're still not interacting with the carina and opening nice side branch. Whereas with a conventional balloon, if you would put the, its uh, marker at the same position in the confluence, you will uh, end up with the carina shift as seen on the left panel. This has also been proven with computer simulations and finite element analysis predicting stent behavior. And as you can appreciate on the lower row, um, that after a pot procedure, you can actually see a nice opened up side branch with almost no struts. And after you do a casing balloon inflation in this situation, you will have and end up with a perfect bifurcation stenting. And this has also been proven in uh, bench cases. This is a bench that I just happened to do uh, last week with a pot balloon. You can appreciate the pot maneuver at the initial pot on the left side. Just want to go back once more. And you can also appreciate that you can nicely move the balloon forward. If, you, if, we, if it happened that you were too proximal, you can go and snug it right to the carina 
level and to optimize your stent for further treatment with uh, recrossing and casing balloon inflation. And then on the right side, you can actually appreciate the side branch opening, which is done now through the most distal cell. And you can also appreciate that the stent becomes deformed on the, on the opposite side of the side branch opening. This is why we do kissing balloon to restore the stent to the wall. Um, and accommodate the stent on both branches. And as shown before, after kissing, you again distort the stent on the proximal end towards an ovalized shape. And therefore, we need the repot or the final pot mm -hmm. to restore the stent again and uh, end up with a perfect result. Finally, I just want to show you one clinical uh, example that I had done a couple of months ago. This is an LAD diagonal lesion, uh, Medina 101, if you wish. And uh, I've wired both branches and put the stent into the LAD. And then here you can see the pot balloon. You can nicely um, appreciate the pot at the level of the side branch. Then putting a uh, balloon up to the side branch to the side branch dilatation. And you can again appreciate the stent deformation on the opposite side of the side branch. Um, that's why we place another balloon in the main branch beforehand. And then you do the kissing balloon inflation to restore stent expansion on both distal branches. And this, after, uh, this is the result after provisional. There was a flow limiting dissection on the side branch. So I decided to put another stent in clear stent live mode uh, adjacent to the main branch in a tap fashion. And then again, kissing balloon inflation here and then the final pot. And you can actually appreciate that there is a tiny uh, metal neocarina at this level of the side branch stent and the pot balloon is well away from it, not to distort it and to optimize the ovalized proximal stent after kissing balloon inflation. So you can really meticulously control your stent with that new pot balloon. And this is the final result. Another clinical case is not a bifurcation. This is another use case, I think, for the pot balloon because it's so precise and so small. This was a left main stent that was underexpanded in the mid part of the left main shaft. And you can appreciate that with the pot balloon, you can go almost expanding one or two individual struts at a specific layer and then make the stent expand here. I think this is the best. Um, illustration of that technique you can see how the stent expands at this very tiny spot of under expansion and you can then optimize your stents with that balloon so i figured that this is another use case for the new ptca pot balloon technical specifications are available from the company i think they really provide a nice and wide range of balloons um, and this is my conclusion of my talk Careful planning improves efficiency and durability, and this is specifically true for bifurcation stenting and should be done in a systematic approach. Provisional stent strategy with pot and side branch ballooning should be your first approach. Proctum optimization is important as initially and also uh, repot uh, after kissing balloon inflation. And this little side branch rewiring is important and therefore we need to do the initial pot and i think it's best done with the new ptc pot balloon from medros with that i want to leave you thank you very much for your attention <clears throat> wonderful uh, presentation and uh, good uh, example any question or discussion uh, will, will be welcome Oh, thank you, thank you, Doctor uh, Doctor Le Levengard, for your wonderful presentation. You provide a serial bench test images. Uh, are they very very attractive? Uh, firstly, I have a very uh, very short question. So, do you routinely pre dilate side branch for any kind of biofilm conditions? <clears throat> Thank you very much for this excellent question. Actually, this is an unusual example of my uh, te technique that I use. I usually tell my fellows never ever pre-dilate a side branch, even though it's it's extremely pinched. 
because I think the, uh, the endothelium is still intact and rewiring after standing the main branch through struts with maybe if it's very tiny with a polymeric wire, it's easy and safe. However, once you predilate the side branch, and you might have, have uh, end up with a dissection and then have to rewire it through a stent strut, you could end up in the dissection plane and uh, finally close the side branch. So in the, in 95% of the time, I don't predilate the side branch, and I believe this is a safer technique than doing, doing it. But in this case, uh, I've done it um, because basically, no, actually, I did not predilate. I did plan on a provisional stenting and I then ended up with a side branch. So it was a little bit difficult to get into the side branch after that. Uh, which, which is then is your uh, favorite choice? Amanda, we know the Europe and China has uh, the number one stand for maximum, many stand to choose. Which was your favorite? And the, the second is uh, uh, do you do you you say you use the provisional standing as the first uh, approach, but uh, do you so how under what kind of uh, circumstance you use uh, cloud or the DK crash? They all uh, or, or that, that that means you you don't use uh, provisional standing technique. Okay, yeah, so I hear three questions that I want to answer. So. Um, my favorite stents are contemporary drug eluting stents, um, intermediate struct thicknesses around 80 to 90 microns. I think that's reasonable also having enough radial force. Um, if they have uh, only two longitudinal connectors, I think the side branch axis is favorable, but three is also acceptable. Um, so these are the type of stents that I use for bifurcation stenting. I think nowadays all available stents are suitable for uh, bifurcation stenting and also have well, a good overexpansion capacity. Um, the second question is was uh, provisional stenting. I think this should be the main stem of today's uh, bifurcation stenting. It also has been shown in EBC main trial for the left main that it's safe. And there they have done bailout stenting with the second stent on the side branch in flow limitations. And it actually has been proven a good strategy. So this is also my strategy uh, in bifurcation lesions, unless there is severe disease, of course, in the side branch. And you would stent it um, even without being a bifurcation. Otherwise, provisional should be the main stem. Uh, having said that, and that's your third question, when you do have a primary provisional strategy, it, you cannot do DK crush, of course. Um, I know the, there is the big debate about uh, what is the optimal dual stent strategy, and I think it depends on, on regions, and not that the region is the issue, but the experience of operators. So there are areas in the world where DK crush is the default technique thus leading to excellent results in clinical trials. Um, for me, being from Europe and how I learned, um, I do provisional. And then if there is another stand needed on a side branch, I do tap, T or culotte, depending on uh, the, the bifurcation angle. Thank you for your uh, experience. Any questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lebenkar. Uh, uh, do you uh, uh, always uh, uh, peel, uh, peel, uh, do the in initial POT before rewiring to the side branch? Uh, because in my practice, I uh, if I do the initial uh, POT before uh, rewiring the side branch, I sometimes I uh, got um, uh, I got the side branch occlusion. Uh, before uh, rewiring, so uh, uh, I I want to get some um, your suggestions about these circumstances. Yes, I think a uh, very important question. Yes, I do always uh, do pot in big bifurcations if there is a big discrepancy between distal and proximal reference diameter. I'll do the pot. Um, I think 
the cases where side branches are lost or occluded are those where the pop balloon was too distal. And this is something I tried to show in my presentation. Sometimes the, not so much depending on the operator, but more on the balloon that you're using. And the markers are very variable amongst manufacturers. And also the shoulders are variable, as I showed. And I think, therefore, you really need to know what, what your tools are and what your balloon is and how far the shoulder is from the marker. Because once the balloon is up and it happened to be too distal, then your carina had shifted and uh, you will lose uh, the side branch access. So mm -hmm. I use, that's, therefore, I, I love the pop balloon because it's very controllable. I know the distance from the marker to the shoulder. And I usually start more proximal, as I showed in my bench test. And if I'm not happy, I move it a little bit forward and I inflate it again and move it more forward to inflate it even more. So you can approach the bifurcation without uh, the carina shifting. Thank you. Uh, can I share some comment about the but in the, the, that question actually, uh, practically the biggest limitation of pot technique is that you need to see the tip of the carina. If you don't know where is the tip of the carina, uh, you can do a lot of mess in bifurcation doing pot. And uh, my personal suggestion in those cases is <clears throat> just to do pot, but uh, with uh, positioning of the balloon a little bit proximal than uh, imaginary uh, tip of the carina. That is uh, a little bit safer, I mean, before a crossing with wires, because otherwise you can uh, jump into the big problems. So if you don't have a good visibility of the tip of the carina, there is a study from the Rotterdam where they actually demonstrate that in 40 to 50% of the cases, we can't visualize the tip of the carina. This is the biggest limitation of the pop technique, actually. So uh, in those cases, it's better to do pot with the um, positioning of the balloon a little bit proximal than the imaginary tip of the carina. This is my suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, Dobrin, I fully agree with your suggestion. Actually, you know, a even pot is routinely recommended for any kind of biophagal agent for standing, main vessel standing, is actually we need to identify the localization of carina tip. So the goal of pot is to minimize, to avoid the elongation of carina lens. So because all we know the current lens, lens is correlated with the clinical, uh, uh, clinical events. So that's uh, another reason why we need to use a short power balloon to do post dilation for, for POC, for sitting in the POC area. So uh, I think now it's the time to move to the next speak. So it's my great honor to invite a pro, a Professor uh, Stefano Gali to present the efficacy of the POT technique. Please, Professor Gali. Thank you so much for the invitation to this meeting. Do you see my screen? And uh, good afternoon Hello. to the uh, all connect people in in China. So we, uh, today we now we uh, uh, explain the technique, the cartoon, the imaging. But now we go into the uh, the deep of the cases. So we know very well which is the pot is very important. We we'll discuss now, and it's very important to have a, a balloon uh, magnetized for this reason. And for this reason, it's very important the shoulder. And in my mind, I believe that in the future, we need a cube balloon, not a spheric balloon, very short, six, five millimeter until six millimeter in diameter to optimize very well the uh, POC, the polygon of confluence that is the site where the pot uh, treatment works. 
So now we go into the different case where, where I believe that the POC technique do the differences. So uh, put in the provision extent, this is a uh, 78 years old with hypertension, diabetes, and diffuse peripheral disease. But there is a very calcified LAD di diagonal uh, lesion. In my mind, it is uh, uh, to predilate very well, not touch uh, diagonal and uh, only part in the main vessel to avoid carrying a shift. And now what to do? This is a very calcific when there is important discrepancy between proximal and distal and you see very well. And another in important point when and for this reason, it's very important, the length of the balloon. The very important point is maintain a, 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 a safe length of the um, stent in the proximal part to allow the proximal uh, balloon, the pot balloon, to work. And you see very well in this case, with it is important. In this case, not only the carina, but also the wiring is uh, is good, a, a, a line to guide a pot te technique. And you see very well the the differences between the pot treatment and the distal part. And then we. Uh, complete with the proximal uh, part of the uh, the the vessel with the pot, and then uh, we do a stenting of the ramus as this is a final result. This is a simple demonstration how uh, the pot technique works. In this case, it's possible to use a bigger balloon here and the smaller pot balloon here behind the uh, bifurcation to uh, have a complete expansion. Now, this is a case on left main trifurcation. This is a young man with uh, a stable engine and amputated left main in patent RCA. First of all, in this case, it's very important to use the imaging to evaluate involvement of the three ramos and decide the strategy and uh, the ch choice, the lesion preparation. This is a, 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 a situation and this is in the, uh, in the steel frame images that are big ramos and our strategy is to perform a DC uh, uh, drug coating balloon PCI in the ramus and uh, a uh, culotte and uh, sorry and the cake crash in the um, left main LED and sear. It's very important because you see that the ramus is a, a critical lesion but it's not so calcified but the origin of LED and the origin of uh, 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 osteal uh, cirque is calcified and also the the corona uh, of the mid LA, uh, left main shaft is very calcified in this it's very important predilate very well because we decide uh, uh, to stand strategy and we prepare very well and then we prefer and drag coat balloon in the, the ramos and then we perform a and mini crash sorry non decay crash mini crash with a result stand and we uh, put a pot before and then we perform a tricky sim balloon and then another pot with a 4.0 uh, six millimeter in length at 20 atmosphere and this is a final result but it's very important to see the uh, the ibus result that is a incredible is a good carina image it is a lc uh era 8.5 left main 10 millimeter lad 7.6 ramos 4.9 and this is this point and this is this is a carena carena area is very big one. I believe that the the it's very important, and we uh, have a uh, tapering stand distal to proximal uh, with pot. It's very important to re-engage in the future uh, the, the different um, side and to avoid the um, 
um, wiring uh, uh, under the struts. This is a difficult case of the calcific unprotected left main, a very old male with hypertension and with a, a CCS3 angina with involved LED and bifurcation. And also in this case, I believe that you see very well the imaging. This is not easy because there is a, 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 a lot amount of plaque. In this scenario, is very important. In this scenario, is very important to know very well the um, the images, and we prefer the IBUS. And you see the proximal LED, in the ostial LED, in the ostial cirque, in the left main, mainly in the carina. We have uh, and uh, more than. 200 degree of calcium and in the ostial of LED and the shear more than 270. So we decide to uh, prepare very well with shock wave 3.012 atmosphere at the, uh, 12 millimeter in length at six atmosphere on LED left main and left main and circ. And after lesion preparation, we see very well before the circ. And then the, the, in this case with the IBUS, we see very well the crack in the calcium with, and we know very well that the uh, uh, shockwave balloon lithotripsy works well. At this point, we uh, perform before uh, the proximal mid LED, and then we do a um, this tenting, and then we perform pot kissing balloon, and then report approximately with the 4.6 millimeter length balloon. And this is the final result. You see very well how is the corona. We have a, a, a little space to post delay very well to avoid proximal damages and especially to avoid an, a problem regarding. We see very well the carina is very a big area and the big area also the left main and the seal. I believe that in this situation, IBUS is crucial to identify uh, calcium uh, distribution, protrusion, and to avoid to see if there is a, a, a carina involvement. It's very important to choose the calcium, the bulk. In this case, I believe that the IVL is perfect for this calcium cracking, but I believe that the pot final kissing balloon is crucial uh, because I'll say before my colleagues explain very well, uh, it's possible to open without disturb the Karen. I believe that uh, I was guide uh, very well the uh, uh, the pot technique before uh, discuss regarding the fish. He don't see very well the carina. Obviously, if after pot you see that the the the, the stand in the carina site is not very well. Uh, Expanded is possible to perform another run of pot and then more distal or more proximal, probably more distal, and then repeat and the left uh, IBUS to see very well the stent expansion. And finally, this is a, a case where the pot balloon help us to exit to the trouble. So, this is a patient 70. Eight years old male uh, with a recent lateral ST elevation MI and treated with primary PCA. But unfortunately, the uh, protrude is stenting into the from the uh, circ into the 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 main. And so another point where the IBUS could help us uh, to uh, evaluate uh, how is the protrusion and decide how technique to use. This is the uh, the, the 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 stent that protrude in the in the in the you see very well in into the left main is not a, a easy uh, um, to uh, cross, but we prepare a little we a little bit and then we 
crashing completely the stand with the pot balloon against the uh, the left main wall and then we go to prepare the 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 strategy obviously in this situation there is another problem there is a big dimension of the of the uh, proximal ID due to the uh, aneurysm of the artery and in this case we choose a big stand and we choose a a a, a, a pot before with a, a um 3.5 and then with the 5.06 millimeter in length and then we implant uh, this is the 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 result the 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 situation and then we perform a pot here and a pot with 5.6 millimeter and you see, you see very well how is the complete opening the without discharge the eyes this is a angel images and now we go to the to the imaging from Cirque and from LAD. And you see very well, obviously there is some a little bit uh, uh, not complete opposition due to the aneurysm. But then when we arrive into the uh, uh, the left main, there is completely uh, uh, opposed the vessel wall against the 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 left main uh, wall. Now it is the final result is in the LAD. This is a big aneurysm, it's not possible. The stent is open 5.0, 5.5 probably uh, uh, with the, uh, after the lactation. And then with circular, well opposed. And now we go into the left main and uh, it's possible to appreciate the circular and uh, uh, a, a good carina in this you see and then a completely crash in the stand and optimal result okay key point to use a pot we discussed a lot before but i believe to important to avoid carina shift high pressure in the focal area not need uh, uh, to reduce uh, high pressure stress in not need segment uh, after diagonal and so optimized to avoid geographical miss and it's very important uh, to traumatize the outside the stand due to the very short shoulder of the balloon and then i i believe that the port balloon is useful to us to modulate high pressure post stand dilatation especially in the very long stand where we can use a different port or to flare osteo stand, especially into uh, osteo left main and in the osteo RC. Thank you for your attention. Well, thank you, Professor Gali, for your, for your excellent talk with a very, very attractive, very tough cases. So any comment or question from panelists? Jinghui, I think now it's your turn. May I just ask, uh, Dr. Gary, thank you very much. And also maybe I want to get Gregor in on this. You know, if you remember, there was some, maybe 2015, there was a bench study by Dr. Murasato and Dr. Fine that when he used a low compliant balloon against a non-compliant balloon for pot, they get a bit better stand expansion with a low compliant balloon. Assuming now that you have this pot balloon on your shelf, there's no reason to use any other balloon because of the good characteristics. But when you have the same design balloon, but a low compliance, not a non-compliant, would you use that bench study to say that maybe a low compliant or semi-compliant is better than non-compliant balloon? Yeah, this, this is an important point, but do you remember that uh, and uh, normally uh, the, the profile of this port balloon is good. So I should to use in the case where the stand protruding in the left main, we have no 
um, big difficulties to advance. So I believe that the, uh, obviously the non-compliant balloon profile sometimes is better, especially in calcified. But when we use a stand, the problem is not the profile, but after the post dilatation is the uh, one. Sometimes is a one-shot balloon. So uh, first, first of all, second, if we use a, a non uh, is a low compliant or semi-compliant balloon, the risk, and you know very well that to go up to the atmosphere is the uh, dog bone effect. And I believe that is a, is a not good thing. So I believe that if possible with the new, new device, especially in very calcified uh, lesion, it's better to use a non-compliant balloon uh, up front in, into the predilation. If what is if cross obviously, well, well, I agree on that. Gregor, do you have any input on this? Because my thoughts will be that that was done on a bench model, but you have de novo lesions with plugs that are calcified, a non compliant balloon sometimes will not expand to the right size they need, so you still need a non compliant balloon. Yeah, uh, this is, I believe that at it's very important in this case the which is sometimes the the the, the reason of this is a, a, a two different so the fibrotic plaque this is more simple that sometimes is a, useful to use a or pressure or a cutting balloon or a, or a scoring balloon but the big problem is the case i believe that now it's crucial to know very well how is the 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 the, um, the calcium distribution deep uh, superficial arc of distribution and so and decide how is the better strategy i believe that the ro rotablation is a good thing but uh, in the big vessel and the the balloon based uh, ivl in my experience is change completely the strategy to the bulking and to prepare very well then we use an NC balloon pot or what you want to test if the uh, uh, the bulking technique is able to modify the calcium, and then we go to put a stand. First of all, obviously, uh, is I believe that is not a sense to insist with high, high pressure, but to change strategies. In my opinion. <coughs> Doctor Kali, uh, the, the first case uh, is uh, very impressive. You're using the shockwave to crack uh, the calcification lesion. Uh, if uh, you use uh, shockwave frequently or load the uh, uh more frequently than shockwave. So, well, uh, uh, the shockwave in the last three years changed completely the, uh, the activity in our lab in, in terms of a lesion preparation. Uh, because I explained before, is a based balloon technique and is more easy. Obviously, the profile is not good and so and so, but this is important thing. And in 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 this view, I believe that the port balloon and C normally I believe that in the concept of uh, of uh, uh, our strategy, our talk today is better six millimeter is a, 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 a typical length of the port technique balloon. But we have also other length, and the other length is possible to use to. Uh, test uh, to prepare very well the lesion. And I believe that the pot balloon works at, until 20 atmosphere very well. So we have no problem. I, I don't believe that is uh, a balloon to up to more than 20, 20 atmosphere. Thank you. If you prepare very well the cars. It's not a, 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 a target of this balloon. I believe that it, in, in terms of this way uh, for the pot, it's crucial to have a short balloon because remember, and I uh, un underline this point, it's crucial to have a, a six, seven, or eight, min eight millimeter in the proximal uh, part because it's important to have a, a, a space, a stand space to do a pot. This is a crucial. Okay. okay. Any, any. Go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Now we uh, invite uh, Professor Guo to, uh, to present his uh, topic, uh, JB, uh, Pot Strategy and uh, its application. Uh, dear uh, professors and dear uh, colleagues, uh, 
Uh, it's a great honor to present uh, the GB Port strategy. Uh, uh, I welcome uh, criticism and uh, uh, comments. Uh, I introduced the background. Uh, we know that intervention of bifurcation lesions accounts for 15 to 20 percent of total PCI procedures, and professional standing is the favorable strategy for most uh, bifurcation lesions. Uh, however, uh, problem uh, for pro uh, provisional uh, standing or um, a main vessel uh, crossover uh, strategy involves uh, side branch occlusion and another is a uh, higher rate of TLR relating to the thrombosis and uh, restenosis. According to the COVID-2 uh, study, we know that 80% uh, of uh, of the uh, side uh, occlusion uh, occurred, uh, and uh, only 48% of the occluded side branch were uh, reopened. The uh, occlusion of uh, side branch uh, caused more uh, cardiac death and more uh, stand thrombosis. Uh, the mechanism of side, uh, side branch occlusion include uh, carina shift and uh, plaque shift. Uh, as to Dr. Veselov uh, uh, conclude this uh, mechanism into one uh, theory like uh, uh, called carina mismatch. Uh, we know uh, actually this theory helped me a lot in the uh, bifurcation treatment. Uh, the for now, the most uh, effective uh, strategy for uh, preventing uh, side, uh, side branch occlusion, uh, I think, is uh, geode balloon technique. It change uh, the uh, bifurcation angle, block stretch uh, intrusion, block corona and plaque shift, and keep space between the strut and the vessel. I think, uh, it, uh, and uh, the past studies showed uh, promising uh, results. Uh, another is uh, uh, change in the bifurcation treatment is POT. It uh, reduced the uh, TLR and uh, um, myocardial infarction, uh, which we have uh, discussed a lot uh, uh, in this seminar. However, uh, as we uh, discussed before, the uh, POT uh, especially used the uh, conventional uh, NC balloons. If we put the POT balloon, uh, f f if we put the balloon uh, too uh, distal, uh, too, uh, too further, it might induce a carina shift. If we, uh, we uh, put the balloon too proximal, it might lead uh, the polygon zone uh, unexpanded. So, uh, so uh, uh, and uh, the uh, traditional professional uh, prot protocol uh, includes these steps. Uh, first, we uh, uh, implant the stand, uh, stand uh, by using the geode wire technique or geode balloon technique to protect, protect the side branch. Then we did uh, do the initial port and do the uh, wire exchange and do the uh, side branch key, uh, dilation and the casing, and then we do the final port. So it's very applicable for uh, and for simple bifurcation. But if we meet the uh, multiple bifurcation, uh, as shown by these uh, figures, uh, if we uh, use the GP, uh, GBT to protect the diagonal, we lose the uh, we lost the septal. So if we uh, protect all this uh, side branch using uh, GBT, we might uh, meet uh, device entanglement and uh, procedure failure. So uh, here is uh, our uh, GB port uh, rationale. Uh, rationale. Uh, when we do the initial port, we uh, we put the uh, balloon field uh, uh, and we, 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 we do not retrieve the uh, the jailed balloon and so at this step we can uh, uh, we can have a, a perfect uh, a polygon uh, stand a strut expansion and uh, we can avoid the side branch uh, occlusion and after uh, what uh, we do the final part 
uh, to uh, oppose uh, the proximal uh, stance or proximal stretch uh, to um, fix the uh, space uh, where uh, the uh, the zeroed balloon left. So, as according to the rationale, we uh, we designed the ZB port uh, protocol. Uh, we can, uh, I think it's the advantage is, is uh, the, it only includes uh, uh, three steps. Uh, it's less need of wire exchange and casing dilation. The risk, I think, include the effectiveness, uh, whether it can protect the side branch effectively. The other uh, risk is the safety, whether it can induce the uh, malaposition uh, and the balloon entrapment. So uh, uh, if, uh, if this uh, strategy is applicable, I think we can modify the, uh, the, uh, the JP port strategy for multiple bifurcation regions. We can implant the first stand by JBT. Uh, um, uh, by chilling the first endangered uh, side branch. And then we can uh, implant the second uh, uh, stand uh, by transferring the geode Y and the geode blue from the first uh, side branch to the second side branch. If there are the third, we can move to the third. So uh, uh, to test the safety and effectiveness, we uh, do the batch test. Uh, as we performed the GPT uh, uh, protocol uh, in the silicon model. Uh, and th this is the OCT results. Uh, in the middle column is the final result of the GPT, uh, uh, GP port. The right column is uh, we do the uh, self-control. We can see from the statistics, uh, there are no significant difference between the uh, between the GP port and the self-control, uh, either uh, whether in the uh, malaposition rate, uh, minimal stand area, and uh, eccentricity, uh, eccentricity index and the sim symmetry index, uh, index uh, in the proximal uh, stand, uh, proximal segment of the stand, uh, MV stand. Also, we can, uh, uh, we uh, conclude uh, we have uh, thirty uh, bifurcations in uh, twenty eight patients. Uh, we uh, performed the uh, GB port. Uh, we only uh, found one bifurcation. Uh, we need to revive the side branch by working horse uh, guiding wire, and uh, we uh, did a final casing in this patient. All other patients we. Uh, didn't meet any side branch uh, occlusion or blood flow uh, slowing, uh, or we, uh, we, we never need to, to uh, need to revive the side branch in uh, other uh, bifurcations. Actually, uh, to now we have used a, a lot uh, GB, uh, GB port uh, in, in our patient. Uh, we, we, I think we got good results. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, when we uh, see the clinical outcomes, uh, we found uh, one uh, cardiac death uh, in uh, one year. And this is the sample case of the uh, GB port. Uh, we can see from this uh, baseline uh, uh, angel, uh, there, are, uh, there is a diagonal, uh, is, which is very dangerous. Uh, is, uh, there, there is a, a corona mismatch. And uh, there is a, a septal uh, corona mismatch. And uh, there, are, uh, there is a circum, uh, it's, it's okay, it's very good. So we do not need to protect the uh, circum. So, uh, so uh, when, when do the, uh, then we do the GB port in, uh, to put the first stand. And uh, uh, when we uh, fixed this stand very well, we did the, uh, we implanted the, uh, the second uh, stand. Uh, to uh, protect uh, uh, the septal by GB port. And uh, oh, after fixing, uh, fixing this stand very well, we uh, implant the third stand uh, uh, using a geode wire technique to protect the uh, circum. And after that, uh, 
uh, we got very good result. Uh, we uh, protect the side branch and the sep uh, septal very, uh, very, very well. And uh, because the simple uh, simplization, we only cost, uh, uh, it only cost uh, uh, one hour to finish this uh, uh, three stand uh, uh, implantation. And it only cost uh, uh, 100 mil uh, contrast reagent. And it, it only uh, uh, cost uh, 300 uh, milligray uh, radiation. Uh, the IRAS results uh, are okay, I think, uh, because of the time I, I, I want to show now. Uh, I also, I think there, uh, there be a uh, risk uh, for the GB port. This uh, case, we, uh, we see that uh, uh, very severe cancer fabrication uh, in the LAD. It's unexplainable. Uh, uh, and we, after ROTA, after after rota we uh implant the lad stand by uh, gbt to protect uh, uh, protecting uh, the uh, diagonal after uh, what when we want to retrieve the side branch the the uh, the diagonal uh, balloon uh, it can be retrieved uh, easily uh, so then we uh, we inflate the uh, balloon and uh, get the balloon out and uh, or the the gel the wire out. Then we fix the uh, stent. The result, although the results are, are okay, but uh, actually the GP port uh, was not a success in this patient. Uh, patient. So uh, we think, uh, yeah, GP port uh, did have a. Uh, 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 is applicable in most cases, but in uh, severe uh, classification cases, uh, it should uh, have uh, uh, some risk. So uh, this uh, this study we uh, we published in uh, this magazine. Magazine uh, uh, a lot of people have us uh, uh, finish this study. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Uh, wonderful uh, case and uh, techniques. Uh, any comment or questions about this? What is the size of the guiding catheters uh, you use for JBL technique? Uh, no, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Vasilev. It's uh, very honored to uh, see you here. Uh, uh, we uh, normally use uh, the six uh, French uh, uh, guiding uh, because uh, it it uh, didn't uh, meet any uh, difficult uh, in six French. Uh, if uh, so for the L left main, I use the seven French. So that means that usually use you use um, semi-compliant balloons, not non-compliant. You use semi-compliant balloons for the jailing because uh, in six French, if you use larger balloons, it's a little bit yes, uh, yes. not enough space. Just uh, yes. yeah. okay. Thank you. Now, uh, now uh, we will thank uh, Professor Guo's uh, JB uh, part uh, technique. Now we will, <coughs> because the time, uh, we still have time. Any question or discussion uh, about the part uh, technique and uh, yeah, so I think. So I think Jin Kui and Dobrin, we still have some time to open our discussion, to expand our discussion. My first issue is how many percentage of uh, AG dissection after post dilation using conventional balloon? Dobrin, Jin Kui, do you have any data to share with us? About the proximal dissection, uh, we, if we talk about the pot balloon, uh, just uh, be because we started to use it uh, from the beginning of this year, and, uh, up to now we have uh, around uh, maybe 70 cases. I, we are in the preparation of manuscript at the moment, just to um, compare our um, pocket technique, which is done with uh, this is pot plus 
kissing uh, versus uh, standard kissing. But uh, honestly speaking, uh, I don't remember to have, at least for this year, with pot balloon, we don't had any edge dissection in the main vessel, in the, in the stunt area. Yeah, wonderful. A customer Darwin from our from our last 20 years experience, we perform OCT guided PCI for many, many cases. So from our dead beds, so they age dissection after post dilation using conventional non-compliant balloon it is around two to three percent. Some of them are associated with very severe complication. It means the dissection in depth of media with a dissection length greater than three millimeters. So some are uh, I need uh, I needed to be treated using second stand. So that's a rough data. But for digital edge dissection, it's pretty much common. So I think it's another reason why intervention cardiologists are afraid, afraid of using very aggressive post dilation for digital segment stand. Mm -hmm. So from my case, I just presented at the beginning of this session. So the digital three millimeter segment, the minimal stand area, it was only five millimeters square. So it's a pretty, pretty small because we dare not to use large non-compliant balloon to post that land. So Jing Hui, do you have any data and experience to share with us? I don't have any specific statistics on it, but I must say that what you say is correct. Uh, for proximal dissection, uh, one of the main issue is actually previously without this pop balloon, we have landed a stand that is too short in the proximal main vessel. And when you use a conventional non-compliant balloon, you might end up with the proximal edge dissection. And also, if we were to use uh, imaging, we are going to pick up more of this dissection. Uh, so we may be seeing more, but I have not had any experience with proximal dissection since using the, the new pot balloon. Um, distal edge dissection, as you said, because you have the tapering vessel, and I agree that most of us are very cautious to use high pressures at the distal edge. Now that we have this balloon, we can use the dot, so that will actually encourage us to use higher pressures to, to do it. As, uh, as uh, Professor Laman got shows, uh, she used uh, the stand boost uh, technique very uh, frequently. I, I'm also doing the same. If you do use in that, uh, uh, besides uh, uh, IVAS or OCT, you can very precisely uh, uh, localize the balloon's proximal part and the stand. And then you will uh, prevent the occurrence of uh, uh, proximal dissection of uh, the vessel. To, to avoid the uh, proximal dissection, I always uh, put the POT balloon uh, further. But uh, uh, using the conventional NC balloons, after POT, uh, we do the others. We found some. Sometimes we found a a, 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 a ring of struts. Uh, was not uh, uh, opposed. So uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's uh, the POT balloon, it's quite uh, fit for the POT. So another issue I think is about the gel balloon technique. So during Jinghui, I don't know if it's a, a popular used during your daily practice. I missed that. Yeah. Sorry, Dorin, you want to go first? I'm, I'm okay. Uh, you mean the pot balloon or uh, the geode balloon? Geode balloon. balloon, I personally used uh, twice, two times okay. uh, in all my practice up to now, and uh, in that were in both cases that were left, left main cases with the left dominant system and. Uh, circumflex uh, which was jailed and I used uh, balloon for protection. These are this is my huge experience with two cases just uh, that's enough that's enough <laughs> 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 
I, I don't like. I, I'm not sure that I will be useful for uh, with my experience uh, with the technique. Mm. I think uh, in the left main bifurcation, the sometimes the J JB technique is very important. The, if you don't do this, uh, sometimes uh, very dangerous. Jinghui, do you agree? I, I also have very limited experience with uh, J balloon technique. Part of the reason is. I'm always concerned about after pulling back the J balloon and you perform a pot, you end up closing up the side branch anyway. But so I want to congratulate uh, Goen Zhang Pop for this modification of the J balloon with the pot. I'm perhaps mechanistically more confident that I may be able to save the side branch from being, uh, from being compromised. So I'm, we might be using a lot more after with this modification. But I have very limited experience. Again, I think it's all dependent on who you work with. Uh, if I have a fellow from China, I'm sure I'll be learning from them. I'll be using more. <laughs> so, Professor Gali, what's your uh, uh, what's your comment about the Jiao Balloon Tani? But for honest speaking, I use only one one time in my life, in my uh, working life. So, uh, I, I believe and I agree with uh, Professor Shoke that the uh, this technique is important to know very well, but it's very important because if you uh, uh, you are sure that you uh, you there is a possibility to cross the this very small balloon, but sometimes the risk is especially if you have a a, a, a calcific lesion, don't cross to force and distort the stand. But if you perform this technique. My my suggestion is to maintain a, 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 a balloon in the main vessel. I believe that it's very important to avoid any problem. Okay, because sometimes yeah. I <laughs> see that crash the the stand completely, and then we don't cross the the main balloon to do to perform a kissing balloon. So I know that it's very important to know this technique, but it's a, it's a. a, a, a bailout technique in my mind thank you uh big uh, welcome uh, professor Chin, to the summary speech oh thank you thank you thank you professor love and wow my good friend uh, i appreciate all, all my friends from china from uh, bulgaria from malaysia from italy uh, i think we have spent a Almost one and a half, eight, almost two hours together to appreciate your presentation by four wonderful speakers. And also, uh, thanks to all my friends who provide very attractive cares, very challenging cares. I think periodically communication between us will be very important to uh, promote uh, our knowledge, particularly my knowledge, uh, for for standing in very challenging cases, calcified lesion, complex bifurcation lesion, or diffuse lesion. Even there are multiple standing techniques for different kinds of coronary artery lesion. But definitely, post dilation is uh, man uh, mandatory to promote to improve the quality of standing technique. Finally, I think with the, uh, with the upcoming of part balloon from Brosmed company, I think we will have one more additional, very strong weapon in our weapon tools. I think that would be very important, for example, for calcified lesion, the presence of calcified nodule is very challenging, it's very easy to get balloon perforation. For a, for such a particular case, I think very short core balloon could concentrate on the surface of calcified nodule. So I think they could could improve to make our procedure very safe and very easy. Uh, thank you, all my friends, once again. Hopefully, we can meet each other in person uh, soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. What is POT? The Proximal Optimization Technique, POT has been proposed as a strategy to improve the results of stent scaffolding of bifurcation lesions. It is a straightforward technique whereby a short, appropriately sized balloon is inflated in the main vessel just proximal to the carina. The POT-PTCA Balloon Dilatation Catheter 
is indicated for both the proximal and distal optimization technique. The proximal segment of the stent can be evenly expanded to improve stent strut apposition. The extra short balloon shoulders reduce longitudinal balloon growth, minimizing the potential for vessel trauma outside the treatment area. Provides accurate post-dilatation stenting and reduces vessel wall injury. Rated burst pressure up to 22 atmospheres for stent expansion and apposition without any dog bone effect.